talking a little bit about amplifier input levels, uh, it's easy to say, you know, here in the last graph here to, okay, just, you know, knock it down by you know, 18 dB because its input capability is plus 3. Well, amplifiers are very interesting devices in that they may or may not have a set input clip level. And what they call an input clip level may not actually be what you want. What you really need to look for in all amplifiers is the input sensitivity level spec, not the clip level spec. Now that might sound a little backwards, but the reason for that is is that many amplifiers will clip at a certain level after the limiter is, is kind of tapped out. They will have built-in limiters so that you know, if you're sending it too strong of a signal, it's not going to clip, it's just going to compress the heck out of it. And that may be at a different level uh, than what the actual input sensitivity is. So for our cases in designing sound systems, we really, we really need to look at what the input sensitivity rating is of a given amplifier. The first thing we're going to look at are fixed sensitivity amplifiers. Now what these are, let's say you have a, a line of you know, crown amps or QSC amps like a, you know, a QSC's CA2 series or Powerlight Plus series or Powerlight 2 series or Powerlight 3s, you know, whatever brand and you know, make and model of an amplifier is. So across that entire range of, say, QSC Powerlight, uh, Powerlight Plus or Powerlight Pro amplifiers, um, across that range you might have a 200 watt amp, an 800 watt amp, uh, 600 watt amp, 1200 watt amp, whatever. Regardless of how powerful that amplifier is, the sensitivity is going to be the same. So these are fixed sensitivity amplifiers. So no matter how powerful the amp, you're going to have an input setting that's fixed, very easy to deal with, uh, and typically you're going to see these as either 0.775 volts or 1.4 volts. That's not to say they couldn't be different, but these are the most common. In fact, 1.4 volts is, a, is one of the most common input sensitivity settings uh, for amplifiers out there. And so to find the clip level, well, you simply plug it into your uh, trusty uh, DBU calculation uh, formula. So you take 20 log of the clip level volts divided by 0.775, which is our standard DBU calculation. Um, and uh, we come up with plus 5 dBU. Pretty straightforward, fairly simple, uh, not a whole lot of math to do because uh, you know, generally you just plug in 1.4 volts, convert that to dBU, and you're done. Now where it gets a little bit more complicated is with fixed gain amplifiers. And with fixed gain amplifiers, you may have uh, in a series of amplifiers um, like say a QSC series of amps where whether you have a 100 watt, 200 watt, 1200 watt, again you know these different watt amplifiers in the same line of amplifiers. The gain will be the same but the clip level will vary because in amplifiers you have a voltage gain level not just a wattage level. And when you are designing a sound system that is bi or tri-amplified a lot of DSP crossovers and other processing devices are looking for the exact same voltage gain at the amplifier. Uh, and that's how they will calculate what their DSP settings are within your crossovers and everything else. So getting fixed gain amplifiers are important for these bi and tri-amplifying situations. So how do we find out the clip level of these if they vary based on the power level? Well. If they don't tell you in the spec sheet, which they should, but if they don't, there is a way to find it out. So first we have to do the clip level in volts, and then convert the volts to dBU, as we normally do. And then we take the square root of the max power rating times your speaker load in ohms, and divide that by, by the voltage multiplier. So if you see an amplifier that says X20, or the voltage gain is X40, or something with an X, or you know how many times voltage it is. Sometimes you might see you know 64 times, or either way, you're going to see something with an X next to it in terms of voltage gain, and that's going to be the X gain value that you would place here. So again, not only does the clip level uh, really depend on the max power rating, but it also does depend on the load. So if you set your gain structure 
based on an 8 ohm loudspeaker and then replace it with a 4 ohm loudspeaker, uh, your clip level will change simply by uh, changing what load you place on the amplifier. Um, so that's something you have to be very careful of if you have a portable sound system with different loudspeakers um, that you might interchange in a given system. Uh, so if you do have one of these fixed gain amplifiers, this is something you really have to be careful of, is how you load the amp can completely change how your gain structure is adjusted. So let's take, for example, one of the trickier um, examples is sometimes you'll only see voltage gain in a dB value. Uh, for example, uh, lab group an FP4000 amplifier driving a 2 ohm load. It says uh, instead of X uh, multipliers of what the voltage gain is, it gives you voltage gain of dB. Well, in that case, we just come down here, and we have to figure out what the voltage gain is. Like, how many times is it multiplying the voltage? Well, in that case, we simply convert uh, dBs back to voltages. Now, if you think back to some of our older equations, you take 10 to the power of that dB divided by 20, that's our voltage conversion, so in this case uh, to convert 38 dB back to a voltage multiplier we take 10 to the power of 38 divided by 20 and factoring that out, doing some math here, that gives us a value of 80 times that's, so it's uh, whatever's coming in, it's multiplying that voltage by 80 times or 79.4 to be exact and we can double check what we did um, by putting it into our standard um, voltage to dB calculation. We want to take 20 log of the value over the reference. So if something is multiplying it 80 times, it's 80 times 1. Our reference might be 1 volt, and our uh, value here might be 80 volts. So if we take a volt, uh, if we want to figure out what the dB increase is of going to 80 volts from 1 volt, plug that in our formula, and we get 38 dB. So, okay, so we've done our math right. So that's kind of a way just to, uh, again, check your work. So now, now that we have our X value here of 80, we go up and plug that into the formula above of the square root of the max power rating times our load in ohms divided by the X gain value. So, down here we have the square root of, in this case, the FP4000 is a 2000 watt amplifier into 2 ohms, so that's going to be max power rating times load and ohms, so that's 2000 watts times 2 ohms, divided by our x factor here of 80, again, which we just got from our previous calculations. So, again, doing some more math, this whole equation here boils down to 63.2 divided by 80, which gives us 0.79 volts. Convert the volts to dBU, and it's just slightly above 0 dBU for this particular amplifier. Now if we were to change the load impedance or if we were to change the wattage, well this value would change as well. So once you figure it for one amplifier configuration, it's not necessarily the same for all others. And again, if you change the, um, the voltage gain, that clip level will change as well. So it's very careful to know exactly what you're loading your amplifier with and what your amplifier gain setting is. And only then can you figure out what the clip level is so you can set your gain structure. So be, just be very mindful of when you run into these fixed gain amplifiers in a lot of these buy and try amplifying uh, situations uh, that you do the math so that you can do your uh, gain structure settings properly. Again, just a quick rundown. Fixed gain, you'll see um, something that'll say uh, 40x, 80x, or just give you a voltage multiplier value. You might see a dB setting. And with a fixed sensitivity amplifier, it will simply give you the voltage at which the amplifier will clip. So um, 0.775 volts or 1.4 volts, or it may give you, say, 2 volts, whatever that level is, that's going to be your clip level that you convert to a dBU, and uh, that will give you uh, what you need to adjust um, your gain structure. Now for simple systems where you might just have one loudspeaker at the end of your amplifier, um, you know, fixed sensitivity is generally easier to use because it's more consistent, so no matter what 
your amplifier is loaded down at, whether it's a 4 ohm load or 8 ohm load, the sensitivity will stay the same, which is pretty nice. However, if you are using a more complex system where you're by or triamplifying, so you're amplifying uh, with an active crossover and you have some special DSP settings, a lot of them will assume that you're using fixed gain. So your low frequency and your mids and your highs are all going to have voltage gains of the exact same. Like they all must have 80x settings or they all must be amplified by you know, 38 dB or 26 dB. As long as that dB or voltage multiplier is the same across all your amplifiers, then you're okay. So you just have to make sure that when you are doing these bi, quad, tri amplifying systems, um, make sure to use a fixed gain amplifier and uh, across, you know, for your low, mids, and highs, use the same gain of amplification and just do the calculations accordingly. Some more amplifier notes that you may find on spec sheets. You know, what is dual mono, parallel mono, stereo, or bridge mono mode for your amplifiers? Uh, well, dual mono is going to be the most common. It's simply uh, two amplifiers in the same package. Um, it's like a two-channel amplifier, and each input is discrete, um, and each output is discrete, and each uh, channel's input attenuator is adjusted independently. So you could have uh, two completely different things being amplified, two different inputs, two different outputs, and just two mono amplifiers in the same physical box. Now parallel mono is the same as dual mono in that, in the sense that you do have two discrete amplifiers in the same box, um, but it's simply uh, giving you a, a virtual Y cable so that you can plug in, let's say you have input one and input two and you want the same thing amplified. Uh, parallel mono will simply allow you to connect one cable into input one and it will automatically and internally connect it to input two. So you just have one cable to feed the input of both amplifier channels within the box. Stereo being the same as dual mono where you have two discrete channels, in this case uh, say a left and a right, uh, but instead of having two independently adjustable attenuators for each channel. You have one single control. So this is much easier to um, adjust the input attenuation uh, at an exact level for both channels. So this is kind of the same as uh, you, know, you have one fader for your master left-right output of uh, your mixing console. Well on an amplifier uh, this is just simply one attenuation knob for uh, both amplifier channels in that uh, one package. Now bridge mono is something that you will come across uh, typically when you're amplifying or connecting to uh, low frequency drivers or subwoofers, something that requires a whole lot of power. You can actually sort of bridge together the two amplifier channels to make one more powerful amplifier. And it's typically wired by using the positive terminal of each channel. So you take the positive terminal terminal of channel 1 and the positive terminal of channel 2. The only difference is the positive terminal of channel 1 is the loudspeaker positive, but the positive of uh, channel amplifier channel 2 may actually be the negative. So again, this is something you just have to check the manual, double check, read it, make sure that that particular manufacturer is, is um, you know, spelling it out for you because it's you know, pretty easy to burn up an amplifier if you have it wired wrong. Um, the other thing to take caution of with the uh, bridge mono mode is that an, if an amplifier can typically handle down to say 4 ohms as its minimum load impedance, uh, it's going to double in bridge mono mode. So if it can handle normally in a dual mono mode, if it can handle uh, two 4 ohm loads, um, then in bridge mono mode it can only handle an 8 ohm load. You gotta be real careful to make sure you don't overload your amplifier in uh, bridge mono mode. 